Prophet Spotlight. I'm Pastor Dan, and today we'll talk about Tonga. The, uh, just a, just a, an amazing place, and we're hoping to go in 2023. The negotiations are going as we speak. So I had a number of Tongans in my church at Garden Grove, and they said, come to our, our place. It's paradise. I don't even know where Tonga is. I thought we could do Tonga and Samoa in the same trip. Oh, no, you cannot. <laughs> a long ways apart over open ocean. Anyway, when we announced we were going to Tonga, that wasn't hard to get people to sign up to go. And pretty soon we had, we had a lot of people going to Tonga. So uh, my, my wife, my sons, anyway, we're all going to Tonga. We fly through Fiji, gorgeous. We had a half a day in Fiji, then we finally landed in Tonga. Well, we found we had some issues. Uh, there were like funerals. All the pastors, we were just on one island, so all these pastors all know each other, all know all the church members. So if someone dies, everyone has to go. So there's no one around us. We didn't have any vehicles. They had decided to try to go cheap on the vehicles. So we're just sitting. I mean, it was really tough. So we're in a hotel, we're trying to make food out of uh, hotel rooms and kitchens and hotels. It was by the ocean. I mean, that part was lovely. It was kind of a beautiful setting. But we had a tough time getting going. Uh, went to my site. I had the largest site in a town called Nuku'alofa, the main church. There was no table to welcome people. Uh, there were maybe 30 people in this big church. I said, wow. Pastor was translating for me, but they weren't shaking hands, they weren't greeting anybody. So we can't speak the language, but we went around and shook everyone's hand and just glowed over them, kind of shocked them all, preached our heart out, uh, and everyone was having the same experience. Well, we're having a hard time breaking into this group. But finally, we figured out that there had been some undercurrents, that uh, they've had other groups there that were just there to baptize people and take a picture and go home but uh, really not committed to the people. So we thought, what can we do? So I began to get on the phone and email, and I began to call everybody I knew and raise as much money as we could. I think eventually we got about $30,000. So we got everyone together, and we said to each church, what do you need? You can do one project. And they would say, well, we need a bathroom, or we need to paint these buildings, or uh, we need sidewalks here. And the church where I was at, they needed all the driveways. Oh, it was just dirt and terrible, terrible, terrible condition. Baptistry. So uh, now people began to say, okay, these people are really trying to help us. So our people fanned out. We were at every site. One group here, one group here. I was working at our site. I bent over. I tied, I tied wires for rebar for a long time. It was uh, hard work in the sun. Other people, but soon when we were working and I'm working, pretty soon the Tongans begin to come. Okay, these people are with us. And pretty soon they're in here working. Uh, not easy. This is an island. You have to import everything, obviously, little island. So you got to get cement from New Zealand, everything. We're looking for gravel, looking for water and sand all the time. And after about a week, it broke. And all of a sudden, we began to be just loved by these church members. We have great music. We had great music night after night. Pretty soon, people are smiling. Pretty soon, we're being invited to people's homes. Pretty soon, there's a feast at every meal. <laughs> it, was, it was magic. It was just magic. I don't know how to describe it. There are challenges in Tonga. If you haven't heard, a lot of these islands in the ocean... They decided to change their weekly cycle to match not America, but Australia, which is their trading partner. So all of a sudden, they moved every day down one. So the seventh day, all of a sudden, became Sunday. So you have a decision to make. Do you want to keep Saturday, which is the name of the day, the seventh day, or do you want to keep track if you think you know what the seventh day is from the creation then the seventh day cycle doesn't matter what the name of the day is. That didn't come from God. So that those missions, Samoa, Tonga, others uh, decided to do Sunday. 
So now we have Sunday churches keeping Sunday, and we have Adventist churches keeping Sunday. They're doing it as the first day of the week. We're doing it as the seventh day of the week. It's not easy to preach, trying to persuade people to now join the church when the day of the Sabbath is the same. We just want them to join the people around the world who are fighting for the Sabbath. So baptisms are hard. This is a challenging island. Beautiful people. So slowly, I think my side, we had five, you know, children and people that have been holding out for a while, but gradually we pressed it. Every one of those decisions was huge. And we had cleaned up that baptistry and painted it, and we baptized. And one of the groups sang the song, Jerusalem. Once we heard that song, we began to have that every day. The final weekend was in a big auditorium, and we had the unbelievable music, and then Jerusalem preached to a couple thousand people. Then we had an open-air concert. One of the members had a business downtown, people sitting on trucks. We stopped traffic, and here we were with this great concert. Unbelievable. Feast after feast. Sunday when we flew out, we could hardly get on the airplane. There's so many people there to love us and give us food, praying and picture taking. That's missions. Hope you'll go with us next year. This is Tough Spotlight. Be with us next week. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for